Welcome to Libertarian Counterpoint. I am your host, James Just, and with me is my favorite author and should be yours, Mr. John Cameron. How are you doing today, John? I'm, I'm in a very strange mood, but I'm functioning. Well, you want to hear a strange mood, John? This first story has me in a very strange mood. The Sacramento Rail Yards, has, the city of Sacramento has finally decided to develop the Sacramento Rail Yards because they finally decided that the, the soccer stadium was gonna go. That's the whole thing. Mm -hmm. The reason we did not have housing in the, in the rail yards was because the city council wanted a soccer stadium. And the minute they got the soccer stadium deal, now all of a sudden, we're gonna get to build housing that was much needed 10 years ago when it was all ready, and now we get to build it. When it was already empty fields and... Um, it was empty fields and they had the streets laid out, the sewers, all they had to, literally all they had to do was build the freaking houses. No, they let other people build the houses, yeah. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah, yeah, sell them off lot by lot, block by block, and just build the houses. But instead, they wanted to control the whole development so they could justify this soccer stadium. I'm going to be careful with my words. Mm. I don't mind the soccer stadium. So how much is that soccer stadium going to cost us? Oh, I forget, John. It's stupid. A couple hundred million, mm. at least. And, and, and we're paying for that? Or is the, uh, the, in, the Indian tribe, Native American tribe, it, and the other partners in the team paying for it? I, I bet you we're paying for it. I, it's, I, my guess is it's going to be a lot like the King Stadium does, where yeah. we end up on the hook for a huge chunk of it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The F Republic FC will probably play for a few, uh, for a quarter. I forget exactly the details. It's only it's only a twelve thousand person stadium, and Republic uh, FC can fill a, a thirty thousand. Well, and person my, my problem isn't actually like, the stadium. Like the stadium that. isn't my problem. Yeah. And my problem is that we sat here with a housing crisis in this city, with with rents and housing costs exploding because mm -hmm. we didn't have enough houses. While that thing sat empty for a decade, yeah. with no, streets I, laid out, I, blocks I, laid, all they had to do was hand them out. I I I have so many problems with this. We could focus on this and a, and a, another thing for about seven shows. The the. These planned um, monstrosities that, that city governments do are always um, take 10 times as long. Um, if they'd have just put that land up for auction, right? And said, to the highest bidder, and we will expedite whatever you put in there, they, then commercial enterprise could have come in and put in business, could have put in a manufacturing plant. They could have built high density housing, which is what it needs. It doesn't need single family homes in the middle of, you know. Uh, and it could, would have been done in two years, right? And it would have been producing tax revenue for the last eight years. Yeah, they're gonna micromanage this thing. There's gonna be parks and bike trails. And by the time they get done, the amount of housing is going to be minuscule compared to what it, it should be. And we're going to be on the hook for it. And the city's missed out on all that tax revenue. And then we're going to be paying for a soccer stadium. Folks, there, there are, there's a $3 billion football stadium in Southern California that was paid for privately like that. Just like that. And another one in Vegas, I think. And any time city, state, county gets involved in these things, it's a monstrosity. And all of the, the what used to be, it's not, what is it, Golden One? What's it called now? The Golden downtown? One. Golden yeah. One? No, it's beautiful. It really I think it's, personally, I think it looks like a toilet bowl. But well, that's, no, from the outside. Yeah, on the inside, <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a great facility to watch basketball. It really is. But it would have been way better if if uh, we weren't on the hook for it, and because folks, if it's a good investment, capitalists will be lined up fighting to do it. If it's a bad investment, um, taxpayers pay for it. Is that's that's the only rule you need to know, right there. That's it. Yeah, Am I wrong? Have, well, and if you have too many barriers, then that's why you have to put in subsidies. So you yeah. remove the barriers. If it's a good project, remove the barriers and capitalism and will take is, care of it. And if it isn't, if capitalists aren't lining up to lend the money and be shareholders in it, it's a bad use of the asset, right? Sell it to the highest bidder, let somebody develop it, and if they don't want it to be, but we gotta, we gotta have a King Stadium downtown for our, for our what? Our ego? Yes, that's it. 
Right. Yeah. Well, I, I actually like the, the the idea of the stadium being downtown. They put it on the wrong corner. This should have been on the opposite corner. Yeah. But it should have been paid with private money. There is yeah. literally no reason. Yeah. But talking about bad ideas, we're going to move on to the next bad idea. Yeah. The Sacramento City leaders have announced a $46 million wa old Sacramento waterfront hmm. revitalization plan. This is, again, this is another one of these things is yeah. why don't you just... Get out of the way. Get out of the way and let people deal with it. And as John pointed out just before the show, we were talking. You know, they allowed that restaurant on the, on the, uh, oh, what is it, the Delta Queen? No, no, not the, no, that no. one. The other one that the, I can't think of the name of it. They had a dock that the city was required to repair and didn't. Yeah. And it's, then it closed the the outside seating for people, which is why people went to it. And that that play I. So sorry, I can't remember the name of the place. But basically, they sabotaged the freaking restaurant, right? So that they could do this waterfront revitalization plan. That So ran a, a very successful business that was generating tax revenue that people went down to the waterfront to go to, out of business. And they've done it to a whole bunch of other ones so that they could do this development stuff. And what's going to happen is their buddies... <laughs> whoever gave them the biggest donation, my personal opinion, are going to get rich off the development and, and the choice of things. And I'll guarantee when they get done with it, people aren't going to come in droves. The only time people come in droves is if private development does it and actually responds to people. They're not going to respond to people. Well, and, and here's the thing, John. If a private landlord had behaved that way, yeah. They'd be sued out of existence, mm -hmm. and the city would be charging them, finding some way to fee or find them or do something mm -hmm. to them. Mm -hmm. They would, but because it's the city was the landlord, mm -hmm. they were allowed to do it mm -hmm. because there's no consequences. Well, I don't, I don't know if it's washed out in court, but um, a city doesn't have qualified immunity, and you know if they uh, if they had a contract to provide a certain service, then then um, and broke it, then there should be remuneration. So, uh, and we'll pay for that. Yeah, we, yeah. The, the taxpayer pays. Taxpayer. Regardless of what, the, they'll pay no cost. Even if, the, even if the city gets, you know, has to lose a lawsuit and has to pay money, it's, mm -hmm. it's we pay the money. Yeah. It's not the s politicians or the bureaucrats that mm -hmm. get, All have to pay for All those cops that get, get uh, indicted and brought up on civil charges and the city settles for, that's tax dollars, right? Yeah. Cops don't pay it out of their pocket. All of the, the other things that go on in, and, and City and County of Sacramento get sued all the time. That that comes right out of our taxes, pure and simple. Yeah, it's it's just crazy what they want. And again, the problem is the centralized planning, right? Mm -hmm. They have a some bureaucrat no. or some politician has an idea what the waterfront should look like and no. what they want, what they want. And rather than turn it over to people who say, look at the numbers and say, yeah, people aren't going to come. That's yeah, not no. it's not workable. Yeah. No, it doesn't matter because it's taxpayer money. Mm. So all right, we're going to move on. Mr. Richard Fields was talking about um, is talking about peaceful transfer of power this week, over here. You know, well, kind of. It's, it's sort of. They the, haven't even gotten started trying to stop the transition of power. Yeah, yeah the, this is just the first part. The world is a is a complicated place, and let's see what Mr. Richard Fields has to say this week. Hi, this is Richard Fields with this week's report from the fields. Lame duck President Joe Biden has given Ukraine permission to launch U.S.-made Army Tactical Missile Systems, ATACMS. These weapons can go 190 miles into Russian territory. Russian President Putin has previously warned that introducing this kind of weapon into the Russia-Ukraine war would mean that Russia considers this a direct attack by the United States and that nuclear weapons would be considered as a response. What the hell? Is this what Democrats consider a peaceful transfer of power? A possible escalation into World War III before Trump can take office? Or in their fevered imaginations, do they believe that World War III would prevent a transfer of power, leaving them ensconced in a smoking White House? Trump has promised to end the Ukraine war on day one. How, we have no idea. But we do know that just the pronouncement, plus probable shakeups at Department of Defense, not to mention the intelligence and the alphabet agencies, has struck abject fear into the hearts of those 
who have become very wealthy because of the military, industrial, intelligence, healthcare, education, climate change, et cetera, complex. It's not like Trump will have an easy four years. The Fed, whose contributions are like 90% to Democrats, lowered interest rates by a half percentage point in September to goose the economy just ahead of the election. It didn't work, at least as far as electing Kamala, but it will undoubtedly contribute to inflation a couple of years into the future and into the Trump administration. He'll get the blame. Karma from the lockdowns and ensuing mad money printing during the 2020 lock, uh, COVID and lockdowns. And as Mark Twain probably never said, history doesn't report, repeat, but it does rhyme. In 1928, Herbert Hoover was elected. That was during the Roaring Twenties. The first Fed created inflation. The stock market boomed until October of 1929. Then it didn't. Today we have asset markets priced at near all-time highs. Inflation and Fed tightening to stem it are in the cards. Is a rhyme with the Great Depression likely? Probably, particularly considering that Trump is promoting punishing tariffs similar to the smoot holly tariffs that exacerbated the 1930s Depression. Do you have gold to protect you from hyperinflation or depression? Bitcoin might be a good time to stock up. I'm Richard Fields, and that's this week's report from the fields. See you again next week. So I guess that is the question. Are they sabotaging Trump's intro, or is it just still bungling Biden? Mm. And is it even a bungle? Well, I've and we know it's not Biden because the man, <laughs> whoever's, whoever has the hand up the back of the puppet, and I would really like to know specifically who that is. I have a feeling I know a few of the names, but I'm not going to mention them. You know, we know it's not Biden, because he didn't suddenly become well after the, um, the debate. He didn't suddenly become younger. He didn't suddenly become smarter. He didn't suddenly become uh, less affected mentally by age. So um, it's not Biden. But I, I said I didn't think that there would be a peaceful transfer of power that the, the um, the, the side of the duopoly that's in power now wouldn't allow it. Um, sure looks like, uh, how can anybody think that this, this, that was a smart move? There's a lot, of, a lot of really dumb moves happening out there. Well, I personally, I'm, I'm one of those people who don't actually think it's a big deal at all, the, the whole allowing the, mm -hmm. it's one of those shruggers. If, if Russia can't defeat Ukraine in the way it's been kind of funded, mm -hmm. then they are a paper tiger. Right, they've got China on their on their border. And Tr Russia isn't the problem, mm -hmm. right? Like maybe if you back Putin into an actual corner and he lashes out with nukes, that's the only way it's actually going to happen. So I'm not really worried about the mm -hmm. World War III thing because th there's no way he can win it, and he's not stupid mm -hmm. yet, unless he's be degrading like Biden is, and mm -hmm. he's actually that is another issue. If he's mm -hmm. mentally there, there degrading, are, there and are some people that say he's he's got uh, paranoid delusions. But um, we're talking about the war in Ukraine, so we are going to move on here, for John, just to get on. Do Ukrainians still support the war against Russia? Well, this is the way they ask the question is kind of flawed, right? Mm -hmm. Is do you support the war? Do you want peace? Well, yeah, and most people are going to say yes, I want mm -hmm. peace. So, yes, mm -hmm. they want peace with Russia. That is a mm -hmm. given, mm -hmm. right? Anybody who's at war after a few months is going to want but, peace. But how? That was a question that was asked, and that's what's interesting. When when. Um, did you want to? No, go ahead, okay. please. So the, a, a poll, and I forget who did the poll. Um, do you remember who did the poll? Um, no, not specifically. No, no. So they asked uh, Ukrainians uh, whether they supported um, a negotiated peace that involved transfer of some territory. One of the questions. And the people in, in Kiev, 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 I don't know how you say Kiev, um, said, the majority said, no, no, we don't, we don't want peace. It was like 60 or 70 percent said, no, we, we want to keep fighting. But the people in the, the cities that are, 
And Harvard said, yeah, let's negotiate some peace here, and if we've got to give up a little territory, that's fine. Whereas when this invasion first happened and the war first started, they, there was like 80% of the Ukrainian people said, no, let's not negotiate a peace, let's not give up any territory, let's just fight on. But this thing is dragged on. I have no idea what the Ukrainian casualties are. They've got to be high. I mean, they're, they're minuscule compared to the Russian casualties because... Yeah, Russia's four times as big, right? Yeah. Well, and then, and you know, Russia's, you know, conscripted people, emptied prisons. They've got uh, basically uh, North Korean mercenaries fighting for them who are supposedly special forces. And they very might well be until they, for the first time they get to look at a, a device that has access to the Internet and they see how well people are living about 100 miles away. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if one of the regimental commanders doesn't just say, hey, can we come on your side? <laughs> just give us some of that good stuff, bro. Um, so um, it's, it's very interesting that, that the, the, it's not interesting, it's predictable that this position will change. It's well and good to say, let's go to war, yay, gung-ho, all the rest of that, until you start seeing the boys come back with, with missing limbs and in coffins and body bags, and you see the, the ruin that it causes. And, uh, so, yeah, and, and to land that you can't access anyway. So yeah. if you lose stuff that you haven't had access to in two years, two yeah. and a half, three years, mm -hmm. you're not losing much. And right? now we're, to, we're talking about, I think, I might have read it, um, uh, giving them land mines so as a, as a means to protect Ukraine from the Soviet Union. There are parts of Cambodia that you still can't go into because there is about three million landmines. Kids get blown up all the time there and that war was how long ago? 60 years ago? Something like that? Yeah, and you can allege that our, our land, the United States has landmines that like, they don't, what, de deactivate themselves after a certain period of time? No, I forget, they I, for, don't. I forget how long it is. But yeah, do they all? You know, all yeah. it takes is a couple to fail and for those, that system to fail and then you've got a dangerous thing. No, so I mean, it sounds to me like we're, we're helping escalate the situation. And um, you know, one of the reasons that, that Tulsi's so uh, despised um, is that, um, and I, and I, I think in an upcoming show we'll talk about it in detail. Is that she said that that, uh, you know, there's some pretty good reasons why Putin felt hemmed in. So um, the idea that Ukrainians are now starting to be, they're about 50-50 on a negotiated peace. The whole country, right, 50-50, whereas it's about 80-20 at the beginning. So if that trend continues. Uh, Mr. Trump's, uh, or, or President-elect Trump's promise to uh, end the war in a day might not be impossible. No, I, I don't think it, it's one of these things, when someone is as unpredictable as Trump, people have a tendency to get deals done because you don't want to risk the unpredictability. Yeah. Why? Well, that's historically, that's what's happened. I ain't wrote the book, the, um, art, of the art of the deal. <laughs> All right, we're gonna move on because we got like less than 10 minutes, John. And we'll I'm not, and people, I, I'm not a fan of the man. <laughs> I'm really not. So if I sound like it, that's not the case. But I asked, I took a poll of all mm -hmm. my liberal friends and said, do you think that Putin would have invaded? Um, you know, he invaded like a day after he had a meeting with Biden or a week. It wasn't far. And if Trump was in power, would he have invaded? And all my liberal friends said, no, he wouldn't have. No, because he's too unpredictable. No. And, and the response from Biden is predictable. The response mm -hmm. from Trump isn't. And you, uh, you don't take the risk. Right. Sorry. So we're gonna move on because we got less than ten minutes. Backlash against police, against the. Yeah, this is out of the UK. Uh, let's, let's just kind of. A writer, Alison Pearson, she wrote a. Uh, she wrote a tweet that. Mm. I forget exactly what. So I'll, I'll try yeah, will you, you please? Do it fast. So, uh, she committed a. Um, Non-crime hate incident. In the UK. If you say something that uh, um, is, is labeled hate speech or can be construed to call for action um, that might uh, be construed as, <laughs> as racist or sexist or anti or transphobic or religious, then the cops come knocking on your door. Yes, this is true, folks. In England, it's called a, a non-crime hate incident. NCHI. Yeah. 
and she mistakenly tweeted believing that what somebody sent her was sent her in a text was truthful and it wasn't and immediately deleted the, the tweet two years later they're knocking on her door this is happening in the United Kingdom well and it's not too far from happening here is I think the they're problem. trying it's because and this is the thing these are the police who you can't solve knife crimes in, in England, but They're yet... They're solving 12% in this in this Essex, where she lives, 12% of assaults. But they're going to knock on her door to talk to her about a tweet that she made two Over years a non-criminal hate incident. Yeah. They even admit it's non-criminal, but we're going to spend time hmm. and resources on that while our assaults and burglaries and robberies nope. and all these various issues go unsolved. It's... That's when we talk about wokeness, right? That, that is. That's what we're talking about. Woke is broke, bro. Yeah, that's right there. Yeah. And here's another interesting one. John Pentagon fails the seventh audit in a row, which because Bam. you know, no kidding. <laughs> but this is what, here's the one I find I find funny. But the hope to pass it by 2028. Mm. Well, and here's what here's what's really interesting, <laughs> and numbers stick in my brain, folks. I don't know why. So 30 years ago, they were required by Congress to. Uh, uh, um, be audited. They decided they were going to let themselves be audited 10 years ago, so they waited 20 years, completely ignored a directive, directive of Congress. Um, imagine if you were, well, let's just say Google, and you chose not to have your books audited for 20 years, and then decided, okay, I'm going to have my books audited now, and failed every single audit what would the shareholders do? How many times would the president of the company have been fired? How many people would go to jail? Right? Yeah, that's the point. What would the SEC do? How many people would go to jail if, if Google or any other company did the same thing? People would, be, individuals would pay a price. They, they would pay Nobody millions of dollars the in fines. They would, be, they would be in prison. But because it's the Pentagon, they just, yeah, we'll do that, not next year. 20 years from now. And then, by the way, it's going to take us until 2028 to pass an audit. And if it, if it, was, a pro, if it was a publicly held company, they'd be bankrupt. Nobody would lend them money. Nobody would buy their shares. Nobody would buy their, their stuff. But it's the Pentagon, so they can get away with it. And they do. They get yeah. away with it. Yeah, and it's 2028. By 2028, it's going to come along. Oh, well, we didn't pass. Mm. Sorry, it'll be 2035. I don't know what happened, man. It's just so, like we got 32 <laughs> business units in essence. That's not in the Pentagon, and 27 of them passed. We've only got five to go. Woo woo. Yeah, and mm -hmm. then, and then what's passing a Pentagon, right? Because I'm, I'm I'm going to throw the Pentagon a bone here, right? How do you pay for your black projects and pass an audit at the same time? Um. So there's so there's some there's some things to work out. I I'm actually willing to throw them this bone, but well, you should have had it worked out by now. Is my well, point? The, 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 <laughs> this the, my the, point. The black projects, the hidden stuff that we're paying all this money for that we have no control over because we don't know what it is, but it's our tax dollars and they spend it like water. That's like literally one department out of those 32. The rest of them, pass that audit, baby. Yeah, I mean, there's there's no reason that your your supply chain couldn't pass an no, audit. No. There's no reason your that your internal you're controls over inventory can't pass your an valuation audit. on the buildings, the valuation of the boats. Oh, I'm sorry, ships, the airplanes. Yeah, the the hey, how much money did you spend on paper clips this year? Right, these are things that they should know. And I get it, it's a big huge organization. You're going to lose some receipts. There's going to be a little bit of that in it, but <laughs> that doesn't mean you fail an audit. It just means yeah, here's some of the exceptions. It, it, ah. It drives me crazy, John. It's driving us all crazy. All right, but speaking about good news. Good news. We got a little good good news coming in. California became the first state in decades to vote down the minimum wage increase. Mm -hmm. And Californians have finally realized, well, at least for now, they'll, they'll forget mm -hmm. that end consumer pays all costs. Mm -hmm. And that you can't continually raise costs without raising costs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's how it works. Well, you, can, you can either have a lower quality product or less choice in product or no product um, but you can't you can't put out a great product at the same price if the most the biggest part of your budget labor is inflicted on you by outside sources and not market forces forces and people are realizing that 
Yeah. And and you know, and now fast food, twenty bucks. Who decided that? Who decided that? Yeah. Just kind of randomly. Yeah. Well, and here's the other thing. None of these people who, who talk about raising the minimum wage to get more money in the workers' pockets mm -hmm. ever say, okay, but if we're going to do this, so the only person who's going to benefit is the worker, we're going to have to adjust the tax rates mm -hmm. so that the employer doesn't pay any more money. All the money that the employer goes to is just going to go to mm -hmm. payroll. It's just going to go to the employee. The government doesn't get a bigger cut. Mm -hmm. But that's what happens every single time you raise the minimum wage is the government also gets a bigger cut. Yeah. You're raising your. Why do you think they do it? You're, that's yeah, because they want more money. It's and a, every time you put in a minimum wage, you lose jobs. Every right? single lose every jobs, lose hours. Time. It's so they're saying they're doing it to protect the people, but what they're doing, uh, I don't know why they're doing it. It's a, it's a, what do they call that? A virtue signaling, and and there is no virtue to picking and choosing who gets paid and who doesn't get paid. Let the market do it, folks. Remember when we used to have apprentice programs? where you go to high school and learn how to do a trade and then you go apprentice somewhere and you get paid below the standard wage until you were actually good enough to earn the, the standard wage. Yeah. So that's gone. That's so, gone. All right, John, we got one minute and you want to cover this last topic, so go nah, for it. I think, yeah. You don't want to so, cover it? You got a minute. Okay. So uh, National Book Award is going to uh, a publisher of uh, basically has a history of publishing and penning um, some pretty virulent anti-Semitic stuff. And there he is, and he's the father of um, the other Coates, who basically uh, rewrote um, history in a specious and completely unsupported and unscientific way. So there you have it. I mean, it's, uh, it's and it turns out, oh wait, here's, here's a little corruption for you. It turns out that he used to be on the board of the organization that's given him um, this award. But we know all these awards are like incestuous. So, you know, yeah. these kind of awards are incestuous. Business awards, right, that mm -hmm. you actually pay to get an award. You know, mm -hmm. These kind of things, yeah. they're, they're meaningless. Is Who's who in America? Become. Guess what, you gotta pay to be in that, bro. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, a lot of these things are meaningless. Yeah, it's like, uh, it's this is like a meaningless the Nobel thing. Prize. It's lefties giving prizes to lefties, lefties. Yeah. and that's it. So the rest of us, we don't really care, and yeah. I think that's. But it is strange how anti-Semitism has all of a sudden become acceptable these days. Mm. It's, it's very weird. All right, we are out of time. Thank you for watching us, John. Thank you for being here. Thank the crew inside for working very hard. But most importantly, I'll thank you again for tuning in. Have a good night, and please remember to Ditto. love. Ditto. Thank everybody. you so much for tuning in, folks. We we really appreciate it.